decisions and communication of those decision, decisions is essential in terms of how we get through the COVID pandemic. Now, this is going to be a difficult period and there will be some people who think we're asking a lot of our government, but it's nothing compared to what the government is asking of us, the people of New South Wales, and it's the people of New South Wales that must be prioritised. So I'm calling on the government, recall parliament, have the 11 o'clock press conferences, speak up to the people of New South Wales, clearly communicate in a stable way. It's the best way of getting through this public health emergency. Ryan, over to you. Uh, thanks, Chris. You don't get to decide when you're the Premier of New South Wales what day you'll have to be accountable. You're accountable to the people of New South Wales every day, but even more so when we're in a very, very difficult situation like we are in now. We've had 177 people die. We've had thousands of people in the last week alone catch this virus. We have a health system in crisis. Now is not the time to walk away. Now is the time for the New South Wales Premier and the government to step up in the same way that they're asking the community to step up. We have a situation in New South Wales emerging where if you call triple O and ask for an ambulance, you may get a firefighter. That's not good enough. We have a hospital system whereby in the middle of this outbreak in Canterbury, we have a hospital on its knees and at breaking point where staff are making it very clear that they are concerned with the conditions they're working on and the resources they have available to them. We have a health and hospital system across southwest and western Sydney at breaking point. And on top of that, we have in western New South Wales, very concerning numbers for rural and regional communities. Now is the time where the community expect the Premier to step up. Now is the time for the Premier and the government to outline what they're going to do to make sure the next few weeks our community can get through it, our hospital system can get through it, and our health and ambulance system can get through it. And at the same time, we need to make sure what is expected of us. As Chris said, we've got a lot to do as individuals, but we rely on the government to also do a lot. And to do that means turning up every single day. You don't get to pick and choose when you're accountable. When you're the Premier of New South Wales, you're accountable every day, particularly when you're facing a worldwide pandemic and when you're facing arguably the most difficult two weeks of this pandemic our communities faced. Yeah, well, thank you for giving me that information. Look, firstly, our condolences are, for the, are with those families of those people who have passed away as a result of COVID. Obviously, we're very concerned about the stress on the New South Wales public health system at the moment, as Ryan spoke about. Uh, when it comes to freedoms, obviously, obviously, the Doherty Institute model calls for it when it gets to 70 per cent. We're calling on the government to release the health advice that's been provided to you by the Chief Health Officer, Kerry Chant. Now, for the last 12 weeks, we've said to the New South Wales government that information should be made public, speak up to the people of this state, let them understand the circumstances by which decisions are being made. That's not happening at the moment. Yeah. Well, look, that information's only been provided in the last five minutes before this media conference began, the, the circumstances surrounding the West Hoxton outbreak. Look, I, it's difficult for us to comment about a circumstance that we're not aware of yet, but I think that mitigates in favour of having these media conferences. Now, I make this point, and we've said this for the last 12 weeks, mistakes will happen in a global pandemic. No one is expecting miracles, but clear communication and scrutiny of government decisions should be the minimum that governments accept. And you can't pick and choose when you're going to be accountable because the stakes are just too high at the moment. And I don't think anyone believes, including members of the government, that their decisions will be infallible. They'll make mistakes along the way, 
and as a result, scrutiny needs to be applied, not so that we can make a political point or score a political win over the government and the media is the same story. It shows that lessons can be learned and we don't make the same mistake twice. That's the key part of accountability and scrutiny, particularly during a pandemic. Yeah, look, I can't comment and I'm not going to speculate on the Independent Commission Against Corruption's inquiry. I'm unsure and unaware of those, the circumstances surrounding their inquiry. But I will say this, it can't interrupt with the management of the COVID pandemic. And I realise there may be many things going on in the government at the moment, some of which are opaque and are not open to the opposition. But the Chief Health Officer is there as is the Health Minister, as is the Deputy Premier, and there are other people that can fill the void to speak directly to the people of New South Wales about the circumstances of the pandemic, changes that will be made, and the challenges that we all have over the coming months. We can't get in the way of the government's health pandemic response. I think that's it, Ryan. Anything else? Thank you. That Well, look, we have to get the balance right, and we've said that we do want to start to see our community reopen again. We need to get people back to work. We need to get businesses open. But as Chris said, we need to do that in a transparent way. And one of the things that concerns all of us is making sure that our hospital system will be able to stand up and be able to properly function and resource. And what we've asked the government is to release that data, to release that advice about how our hospitals will cope during this difficult time, both in southwest and western Sydney in particular, but also in western New South Wales and some of our smaller rural and regional hospitals. Well, our hospital system is in crisis. There's no other way of putting it. They are working enormous hours. There is no leave. There are very few breaks, opportunities for breaks. They are doing double shifts. They are working incredibly under enormous amount of pressure. What we are seeing also in our ambulance system is exactly the same, a system that is absolutely at breaking point. And what we're saying to the government is if the next two weeks is going to be our peak, then release that modelling to show us that what you've done in terms of the hospital and ambulance system uh, can be able to stand up to this.